Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today for Friday, August 9th, 2013. I'm Darko and I'm ready to go here. Uh, I might just put this in one little video here, a uh, little five minute video or eight minute video and move on because this was supposed to be part of part one. Coming soon to U.S. Syrian refugees, State Department agrees to allow 2,000 um, Syrians and major policy shift. So we talk about at the end of the last video about Pakistan and the Chinese-Pakistan economic corridor, and how there could be ooh all of a sudden there could be uh, uh, you know uh, destabilization. Uh, basically, they said Pakistan can be the new terror ground. So it's like I mentioned on Wednesday, wherever the powers that be want to go, to not just exploit their resources, but to change the way they live, change their society. You want to create a mass exodus of um, you know refugees and that's what we're getting now and how do you do that well you get an international global terror force um, that is owned privately by by the elites and you just put them and all you put them in the country that you want to exploit and then all of a sudden they start they start uh, 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 fighting against the real separatists the real rebels and then they, they take over, and then eventually, uh, when all when all is uh, destroyed, then come in the uh, the humanitarians and impose what they call democracy, and you get the change that you want. And I mentioned about how these countries like Iraq and Syria and Libya, all these countries, Pakistan, they were all put together uh, back in what the nineteen uh, forties and that, and different times, of course, for different countries, but they were put together and uh, by the West, and that was basically to exploit the resources, and they put whatever, um, uh, you know, like in Saudi Arabia, they have what they have there. Uh, some people say that um, that actually in Saudi Arabia, what you have are actually a, a Jewish-run system. Uh, Jews that infiltrated there, along with other places like Turkey, a long time ago. So uh, this, is, uh, this is for extracting resources, but this is also to ma uh, basically maintain some kind of control, societal control. And now you have all these refugees uh, being created. I mean, lots of them. A lot of them went to Jordan, but then also to Turkey. Uh, it's getting really bad in Syria. I mean, they've pretty much destroyed the place. And so now you're going to have all these people, these Middle Easterns coming over, uh, like they already have, into other countries. I'm referring to mostly, it, it seems to be a policy that's done by the globalists. I think it's done on purpose, a clash of cultures and create division in that, to send them to European nations and to uh, 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 United States and Canada. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is definitely... Um, this is definitely part of the agenda as far as multiculturalism. I already went into it about the difference between multiculturalism uh, in the Europe and the United States and what we think is multiculturalism uh, is actually not, such as the United States. You say multiculturalism, well, it's actually not multiculturalism. It's actually no culturism. That's what it does. And, and, and even in the uh, Europe, um, you can see how even in places like in France and they, they want the mass influx of these uh, different people in there to dehomogenize the culture. Um, but, but at the same time, they don't want them to bring their culture. So they don't want them to wear the veils. They, everyone's scared of mosque. And yeah, I mean, they're able to, to do what, they're want, what they want right now. But you, you could actually see places like uh, uh, London or uh, UK, uh, France, and even the U.S. where you're going to start having like situations like in Syria where it gets that bad because of a clash of cultures. But you can't blame these people because we bomb them, we drone them, or we support this international global terror force known as Al-Qaeda that's run by uh, uh, by this global elite force, uh, many of them made up by Zionists, that um, that create these uh, refugees. So it's, it's, it's a pretty sad situation. You have to at least sympathize or empathize with them and look past the racist bigotry of Islamophobia that you see in a lot of places, a lot of corners of conservatism or just um, nationalism or just basically people who are referred to as racist that want to preserve their people. You hear it all the time and, and it's about uh, basically the, what they're doing is they're following they're following a Zionist agenda. When they start talking about Muslims as being, you know, the whole religion, their race, being a bunch of heathen, uh, heathens and stuff like that, and barbarians, that, that just lets you know that they, either, that they either are shills for Zionists or they've been duped by Zionists. And the Zionists and, and Jews in general are very, very good at uh, controlling people's minds and the way they think, especially when it comes to the right. 
um, or white people in general, white Europeans, they tend to take the side of Jews and they don't even know it. On that last note, you have to remember, like I mentioned before, you have the main three religions, which is Christianity, uh, Judaism, and, 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 and Islam. What? They're all Abrahamic religions. They're all views for, for control, for social, uh, uh, political control. So one bash in the other just proves that that's what they're there for, to do, to divide. So 40% of U.S. whites lack non-white friends. Now I'm going to finish up with these other drones and stuff that's going on. I only have a few articles. But I wanted to include this because I, this is what I talked about. I was just talking about this. 40% of U.S. whites non, uh, lack non-white friends, says poll, And 25% of non-whites have only friends of own race. So there you go, right? When it comes to friendship, a vast chunk of Americans are stuck with their own racial communities. A poll says uh, 4,100 people find some 40% of U.S. whites have non-white friends. 25% of non-whites have only friends of their own race. So it says even a co-workers are thrown into the mix. 30% of Americans have no other race in their circles. Now what does this do? The people say this is where the big divide is when they say with, when uh, they talk about multiculturalism. Uh, Certain groups, however, blend more than others. Just a tenth of Hispanics, for instance, have no non-Hispanic friends. So this is the, what I was talking about, the example of identity, or the idea of identity. I was using the example of the Irish Catholic neighborhood in Chicago that's surrounded by just African Americans, and then to the west is just, like I said, a, a United Nations a summit of Middle Easterns, Indians, South Americans, and everything. And the only reason they're still maintain that after all this time is because they identify as Irish Catholics. Once you lose that identity, you have nothing to fight for, which is why they come in after our families. That's why they're promoting all this sexual uh, uh, deviation, people will call it perversion, just whatever, sexual deviation, right, uh, from the norm. And then they say the abnormal is now normal, and that again promotes people to say, oh, maybe I might be this, might be, uh, maybe I might be that. You know, as far as marriage, well, you know, I'm not happy, so let's just get divorced. And I see it uh, probably a nine, uh, at least 70 to 80 percent now of people where you say, oh, yeah, well, I was just with, uh, you know, like grandparents. Oh, I was just with so-and-so, and yeah, you know, they're divorced now. Like, what? Yeah, uh, I'm, you know, I'm the grandfather. I still want to see my grandkids, and of course, half the time they can't. So it's just, it creates this real weird mix that breaks down society slowly as it, you know, as it basically dies. The only thing left is science, and that's what you always see, science coming to the rescue as they destroyed our families. What's more, among Hispanics in relationships, half are with a person of a different race. Just a tenth of whites and blacks in relationships have partners of a different race. There are also regional differences. Pacific states have most racially diverse friendships and re relationships, while the South has the smallest portion of uh, people who have more than five acquaintances racially different from themselves which is why they're called racist. So only whites are considered racist, even though blacks probably stated themselves as well. That's probably what's included in there. It says age-based statistics offer hope for a more integrated future. So is that what you guys want too? An integrated future? So it's hope, right? This is what this article is saying. So they want this. They want the mixing of the bloodlines. They want the dis destro uh, destroying of the tribes, of the people, of the culture. A third of under 30s have a partner of a different race compared to a tenth of over 30s and just 10% of under 30s who have no racial diversity in social. This is only a result of the social engineering. This is just people meandering through life. They have no idea that they're even doing this. They just tend to gravitate maybe subconsciously on a genetic level to attract towards their own people. But, um, but eventually they're going to be surrounded by people. That's, this is my point to wrap it up with a nice little ribbon. Eventually, people are not going to have that choice of even getting with other people. And if they do, then it'll be considered racist and non-progressive. They'll get, again, science in the mix. Well, it's, you know, it's better. It's better if you just, you know, uh, it's better if you just uh, mix and everything that's good for, for your genes and for your offspring. But it's like I said in the last videos, uh, I believe it was either Monday or Wednesday, I think it was Monday, where I was making the point that, um, you know, by... You look, you look at how it is now with more, with as far as whites go in America, more deaths per birth, and then you see this huge chunk of, you know, they say, oh, 70% are still whites. Well, that's nice and everything, but unfortunately, what, like half of them are baby boomers, and the last baby boomers are going to be dying out between 
2024, which is just 10 years away, and 2045, right, which is 30 years away. So by, you know, within 30 years, you're going to see the, the, the white population go from 70% to about 35%. And like I said, what are they going to be filled with? Well, actually, blacks, blacks and whites are going to have the same problem. They're both going to be almost the minority of making up 25%. They're going to be surrounded by Asians a quarter, Middle Easterns a quarter, and Hispanics a quarter. So you can almost see the engineering come into play. But of course, you're going to have what? You're going to have a drop in the overall population rates. Uh, either people are going to be sterile or people are just voluntarily going to not procreate because they feel that it's bad. So imagine that, how, how it's going to change. You don't even need to use brainwashing or uh, subliminal messages or all the programming that they do in television and that and, and school. All you got to do is just be surrounded by, you know, uh, every three out of four people that you're going to be around are going to be not like you. So you don't really have much of a choice. Michigan couple gives birth to 12th son, so the bride's family still foots the bill for the wedding, right? So they welcome their 12th child, and shocker, it's a boy, just like the other 11. So they say here that it has something to do with, um, it appears there's some type of genetic determination. Some families that have a lot of girls or a lot of boys, it's not well understood. So... But me being me, I always like to see what people are thinking. How is the programming setting in with the masses? 65% say it's ridiculous. That's what I expected, right? People don't want to hear these stories, like octuple, whatever, octuple woman or whatever. Two words for the Schwans: stop trying. So, so devout of whatever religion or just blindly following the religion's belief that God, whichever one it is, does not allow any form of birth control. This is part of the organized religions that I perceive as making their followers behave as sheep. So there's some truth to that, but at the same time, it's not organized religion. It's organized spirituality, which is religion. But uh, it says here that the Roman Catholics who don't believe using birth control. And this is what people say. Uh, this chick needs some birth control. You don't have to get pregnant every time you screw. So back in uh, uh, olden times, this was a very good thing, especially if you're, you know, a, like a warrior, if you're like Vikings or uh, any other thing where you have warriors, you know, this family would be held high up there. And uh, now they're just looked down upon because they have no monetary value. See, they're sucking up the, the resources of all these selfish, greedy assholes down here. You know, they're ta you're taking some of theirs now. And this is why nothing ever changes, because these uh, selfish, very selfish-minded people, um, self-minded people, are always worried about themselves, and they don't worry about society as a whole. They don't worry about uh, people actually being free to do what they want. So, as far as birth control goes, I do believe that, uh, you know, there's people that say, you know, uh, you know, they will have to do whatever they have to do to try to avoid it, but um, a lot of times... You know, you'll have a miscarriage, or you'll have this or that. I mean, that's nature taking its course. That's what I see as kind of the blueprint. Uh, 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 you know, everything's going according to plan. I mean, it sounds sad, but, I mean, that's the natural form of birth control. But if you can have this, because it should be a blessing. This shouldn't be a curse, but that's how people think about it. Where before we were self-sustainable, we grew everything on our own. Now it's, you know, we, we only need so many mechanics. We only see so many engineers, right? That's what they call civilized society. Man, I didn't know I was going to go 15 minutes, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. New vision of Al-Qaeda rises from U.S. Embassy closings. So it says a, uh, basically a transformation of Al-Qaeda, the, uh, basically the Zionists and the Western Democratic Nation's own little private uh, mercenary force, a relatively small group led by one charismatic man. See, oh yeah, front man, probably CIA or NSA or Mossad, into a diffuse global organization with many branches that pursue local objectives but follow a single ideology. Go figure. They're very consolidated, like the federal governments. Austin, Texas braces for Al-Qaeda terrorist attack. The fe uh, feds issue emergency alert ordering law enforcement to prepare for attack. I guess they reported on Thursday that uh, the actually Homeland Security drills will be conducted in the Austin area over the next few weeks. At least five killed in the sectarian conflict in North Yemen. At least five Islamist Salafi Sunnis were killed in an ambush by Shiite Houthi rebels in the northern province. U.S. drones pound Yemen, 34 killed in 10 days. And they say that they've actually uh, foiled a plot. So this legitimizes all the drone strikes, right? U.S. drone strikes fueling backlash in Yemen over civilian deaths. So now, you know, they have the whole thing about Yemen pulling it, pulling the uh, ambassadors, shutting it down. Then they go ahead and drone strike. Oh, there's a threat. So it legitimizes it all. It's all okay. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Please join me in part three. Thank you.